Some of you know why healthcare is so important to me and my family, and some of you don't. Here's why fighting for healthcare is personal to me. In March of 2017, I came home to Kalamazoo after two days of working in Lansing in the legislative session. And I got a call that my partner, Chris, was sick. And I figured it must have been the flu. When I finally made it home, I found Chris on the floor. He'd been throwing up for 18 hours. He wasn't able to drink and was extremely dizzy. He was terrifyingly pale. He had blurry vision and he couldn't even stand up on his own. It was the most terrifying moment of my life. We argued over whether to call an ambulance, which won't surprise anyone that actually knows Chris, but I wasn't leaving anything to chance. So we made it to the emergency room in hopes of getting some answers. I remember waiting as doctors shuffled us around, te taking tests, and I just felt so anxious and useless. The emergency room doctors treated Chris for his nausea and then prepared to discharge him. And I reminded the doctors that Chris had double vision. And they said that wasn't the symptom that he had when he came in. So he was being discharged. The doctor said we should check in with his primary care doctor in the future. Chris was still suffering and I was fearful that the worst was yet to come. The next morning we went to his primary care doc hoping to get some answers and the doctor started looking at Chris's pupils and checking his reflexes and he quickly completed the exam and told us you need to go to the emergency room immediately. Everything else sort of just happened in a haze. We sat in the emergency department waiting as vitals were checked, MRIs ordered, and tests were run, and we just waited. For families who've had to wait why a loved one suffers from an unknown illness, they know the mix of caregiving and advocacy and apprehension that sits in your gut as hours pass waiting for the doctor to return. And when he did, the doctor looked to Chris and said, you have multiple sclerosis and the world just stopped. The hospital room felt both claustrophobic yet extremely large. And as the doctor, Chris and I worked through the next steps of getting him admitted to the hospital, I realized I barely knew anything about MS. The universe had just handed us some seriously terrible luck and we had no idea what to do. The questions, the uncertainty, the feelings of powerlessness from both the diagnosis and the healthcare system, it was paralyzing. So, Chris spent a few days in the hospital and a few more weeks recovering from that episode. And for a man who takes so much pride in working with his hands every day, the exhaustion and the strained eyesight were just debilitating. The bills that kept coming from the insurance companies didn't help either. Now, a few years later, our story is a happier one compared to many others. Chris is doing well and his relapsing remitting MS hasn't progressed. But in our country, healthcare and life-saving medication comes with a price tag. Chris's medicine costs 7,200 bucks a month. Fortunately, he has health insurance, so that's not what we pay. But what happens if we lose our insurance? How could someone possibly afford that? There's an estimated 1 million people living with MS in America, amongst the many chronic illnesses that folks are living with every day. If they don't have health insurance or the money to afford treatment, we're condemning them to a life of suffering or an early death. What we need is to fundamentally fix our healthcare system from the top to bottom. When families are in the hospital room, I don't want them to worry about the cost of care for a single second. Healthcare is a human right, and I'm gonna fight tooth and nail to see that that's codified in law. Our opponent wants to dismantle the Affordable Care Act raise the eligibility age for Medicare, and remove protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Congressman Upton claims to be bipartisan, but these are far from bipartisan stances. So we need your help. This fight is personal to me and so many others, and I know when we come together, we can defeat Congressman Upton this November. Now, a lot of you have asked how Chris is doing lately, and I'll say he's good. One of the reasons our household has been extra careful about social distancing, wearing masks, and washing our hands is because the prescriptions Chris takes to that make him ultimately more susceptible to infections. However, during his checkup, the conversation came up recently about a new round of MRIs and how much they cost. 
staying healthy shouldn't require us to fight with insurance companies or have to worry about the price of a necessary test. I'm going to work to make sure it doesn't as a representative in Congress. Thank you for listening to our story. If you want to see massive health care reform in this country, please help us win this election. And we can make it happen together.